On second down, here's Burrow. And he slings one that's incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they got trouble if he continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Tress Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Bengals drive about to get going. Now they dipped a game below 500 following the loss last week, and you get the sense that maybe this team's at a little bit of a crossroads here. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to put it because what's that old malaprop? If you come to a fork in the road, take it <laughs> because this crew, they're losing ground fast. They've got to start winning some ball games, and the good teams, they're starting to separate themselves, and these guys are being left behind. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. An extra man in the secondary for Washington on third down. They'll drop the throw. A dump off here to Bolden. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll look to throw. And he gets it to Bolden. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Second and three. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. They just gave up a sack there, if I'm not mistaken. They gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really poor, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, 
someone to help assist because right now the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Under pressure, they got him again. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure, and it's a loss of six. Blake Gillikin on the punt now on fourth down. Yeah, last week in the loss, five punts as he gets this one away. That's taken on the 25. Call that a 46-yard punt with a net of 40 on the six-yard return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And they come in losers of two straight. And remember, they've got the open date on their calendar next weekend, but you think it's vital. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked up by Jesse Bates. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And they're gonna move it down inside the 25. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant, a lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now back to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Here's Boulder. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. And the Bengals on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. to throw here looking in zone but it's incomplete oh that's gonna hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there now drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down McPherson's kick is good so he's been automatic to this point of the season and he connects on the field goal there and what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon partner because he hasn't missed all year long converts on that one as well and kudos to you you didn't jinx it
Here we go, here we go. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open Here before the ball leaves your hands. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Meanwhile, Burroughs throw, take it in by London. Yeah, he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. 22 yards there, a first down. Now that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Here we go. Barkley inside handoff. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. 11, 11, 11. Off the play fake. Here's Burrow. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. But he continues, Charles, to be under constant pressure. And these sacks, they're starting to pile up. And if they want to have a realistic chance in this one, they've got to change their blocking assignments. They've got to do a better job to keep him upright. If he's going to be on the deck constantly, they've got no chance to win this game. On third down, Burrow. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Jonathan Allen, the former first-round pick, getting in there to bring him down. Charles, not to point fingers, but how much of this goes on the shoulders of the offensive line? Look at the six sacks last week. That's the fourth in this game. Definitely the bulk of it does go on the offensive line. That's what they're tasked with doing, keeping their quarterback upright and clean in the pocket. But I think they have to look at, okay, are we bringing in extra people? Is the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick enough? There are a few other factors they'd have to look at to try and help out, but you're exactly right. It starts with the O-line. The Bengals drive about to get going. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not have the balls go through goalposts. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They'll look to throw here. Throw left side complete. That's Gregory. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. They'll set up to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Gregory. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. He came out ready to play. That's three tackles for a loss, Charles, only in the second quarter. And that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays. You might have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball. 
Second quarter, two minutes remain. 3 0 our score. Second and 16. They're going to look to throw. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. He ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. He'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Gregory. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. But don't tell any defensive coordinator I've played for, but that might be considered a win for both teams because defensively they stopped them short and forced the fourth down. But offensively, they picked up enough yards to give their kicker a better shot if that's what they want to do. Oh, and now movement and a whistle, and they may have to rethink their plans on fourth down. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This from 54 yards away. And that is no good. But there is a flag down. He might get another shot at this. Well, that flag puts them on their heels a little bit more defensively as the officials walk it upfield. Yeah, and they can blame the officials all they want, but bottom line, it's their own fault because, to me, that was an avoidable call. Stay focused and avoid major mistakes like that. They'll look to throw here on first down. Able to find Higgins. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Again, he'll drop the throw. And that one complete once again to Higgins. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. From the four, it's second and a couple. Now it's Boulder, and he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Now the Bengals are going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, helped force the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone.
going to run. Here's Boulder. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. A great play there with his sixth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Bengals will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out. Just thrown across his body and it's intercepted. Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. An unfortunate sequence there, trying to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it, and that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On play action, they'll throw, sliding out of the pocket. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Well, these are the situations that really test the defense, those sudden changes. They're already inside field goal range to start the possession. Their goal now, keep it to a long kick if indeed they end up trying one. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll bring the tight end in motion right here. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, they approach this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. The incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Back to throw. Open man, it's complete to Higgins. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. So with one second left in the half, on is the field goal unit. This a 33-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number three. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. drive about to get going and they got the lead CD what do you think the message was at halftime I don't think the message was too drastic I think at the half or that they need to change things too much I do think the offensive line could play They're looking for Higgins but it is intercepted 
Andrew Booth picks it off. And the Commanders are going to take possession of the football. Not the way you envision things to start out the third quarter. One play and already a turnover. It's interesting. You and I were talking with the coach, and he talked about how at halftime, as a play caller, he wanted to make sure he got a new script going for the second half, not just the one that he operated off of to start the game. Nowhere on that script did it have that result. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. They're all up go. with another nice one here, and before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Now it's Burrow. Touchdown! Drake London, his second touchdown on the season. And the Commanders take the first turnover on defense and convert it into six points. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And it's now 13-7. Kick team out there for the Commanders as they send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Bengals drive about to get going. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum is sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. He'll drop the throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. That time, multiple defenders getting pressure. And it's a loss of six. Well, he gave them an instant to react. It's a classic case of if you blink, you missed it. Off the line into the quarterback in just a couple of seconds. Running back only had a moment to react and attempt to throw a block. The drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So just a three-yard return following a punt of 45. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. Here we go. Out there, set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out, but I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Oh, Davis lost it. It's loose. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? 
it is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. You probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. He needed a yard. That's exactly what he got. Earns him a new set of downs. And while didn't work very well on that play, defenders on third and short know it's going to be a quick read. And really, the quarterback's just going to turn around and hand it off. So that way, you're able to diagnose the play and try and get to the point of attack. But when you're dealing with a fullback, it's hard to knock him backwards. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. They're on the tackle, Minka Fitzpatrick. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. And they go play action now, Burrow. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. It was starting to become a game for him to forget with the interceptions, but that's a step in the right direction. Not only did he choose to run it instead, but he saw the field well and made a nice pick up to get a new set of downs. They'll try the right side here. Barkley. Room here to run. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. You can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand oh, placement hit. and blocking downfield. Might want to take that course. And now they will throw it with Burrow. And incomplete on the deep ball. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On second and 12, Burrow. And this one's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they throw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Here we go, here we go. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Burrow looking to pass. Got his man. It's London. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 26. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle. And the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe go. change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, here's Burrow. And he'll get this underneath, dropping it off for Barkley. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. third down that's going to be complete to his tight end Everett 
And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. It's an 11-yard pickup. Thought they'd run it on third and one. Not the case. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. And with the play clock winding down, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Let's go now. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Commanders. Saquon Barkley, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Commanders have tied the ball game with a chance to take the lead. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And that will put them on top here in the third. Washington kick team back out there now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Bengals drive about to get going. They had that lead that is now gone. It is completely gone. Yeah, how does that affect the psyche? Or am I reading into that too much? They should be okay still? No, you're not reading into it too much at all. You've got to wonder what the psyche is of a team because once you build up a lead and things are rolling pretty well, you don't expect it to change. And for it to change this dramatically, and now they're the team doing the chasing, yeah, you want to check out where they are mentally and whether or not they have it in them to come back. We'll soon find out. Yeah, they're on their heels a bit right now. Boulder. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. He'll look to throw. It's caught, left side, Boulder. They'll give him four yards there, and that will bring up second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Back to throw here. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. This is taken at about the 14. 45 yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return, and they will take over first and 10.
The Washington offense at the line and ready to roll. And whatever adjustments they made at intermission, they're working because the first half they didn't look so hot. Now they seem to be clicking. And you know me really well, partner. A lot of the time I like to downplay the idea of adjustments. Maybe it's just they executed better. But in this case, I think you're right on to something. They look so much sharper, so much better. They obviously saw something they needed to change, and they did exactly that. Change is working right now. That's going to do it. Clock hits zeros. They're not going to get another playoff. Time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and six now from the 24. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. Blitz coming and down he goes. Eric Armstead, the defensive end, will get credited for the sack. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. On third down, Burrow. And he's got his tight end, that's Smith. And he'll get this one way up, just shy of the 45-yard line. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. It's Barkley on the counter. And this is going to be a commander's first down as good running gets him to about the 44. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. Here we go, here They're we go. definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. A handoff to Barkley. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand they're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll run it again with Barkley. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Washington on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll go with a touch pass here, trying to pick it up. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. I saw it coming converged on him before he could get much out of it.
Here we go. Here we go. Burrow going to keep it himself. And he'll be touched out here, but not before he does pick up the first. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that. But by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try and run for it with Barkley. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew for a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Barkley again. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. tired bodies on that field but this is a big play third and goal they'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right that is not going to be any help as they dump it behind the line of scrimmage a rough go there on third down a loss of four sly able to put this one through and the drive will wind up yielding three so they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. And a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. drive about to get going the last series for him a little disappointing forced to punt and now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive first and ten and he'll be upended at the 28 yard line just a three yard gain there one thing I think that's safe to say defensively the tackling has been really good and because of that it's been very very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch you're tackling them almost on the spot that means you have to run extra plays harder to move it here's a second and seven he'll get that complete to Albino and past the 40 before he's out of bounds Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. to throw now on first down and this one is incomplete normally you think the tight end is going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact but in this case maybe a little too much target to hit that one was timed well incomplete Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. 
Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They'll look to throw again. Oh, he'll let one go deep for Higgins. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play. But he could not pull it in. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with the football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And Washington will take control of the football in great field position. Four now. Here's first and ten. Hunt will try going up the middle. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Now the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. They'll run again with Hunt. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. It's a first down for Washington on a pickup of 11. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And this defense here going to burn their second timeout. But you can also factor in another timeout that they'll get when the clock stops at the two-minute warning. Play fake. Here's Burrow. He's got it. Touchdown, Commanders. Herb Smith Jr. from 19 yards away. And the Commanders look like they're going to get back in the win column as they extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. Extra point by Sly is up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. The Bengals drive about to get going. 
Well, Charles, you remember their last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it, but you understand why they did in this close game late. Now, though, the road back is even tougher. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it was fair to look back and say the fourth down was a moment where this one was decided. But as you mentioned, understandable about why they went for it. But hey, a lot of credit to the guys on the defensive side of the ball. They knew they'd have to defend in that situation, and they got it done. So following the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 25. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Gregory. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. to throw again and the Washington pressure gets to him he will go down multiple defenders get to him there and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game now on third and long they'll look to throw now a desperation throw deep downfield and it's knocked away and incomplete that means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. <laughs> Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And Washington is going to win the football game. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none. Yes, here exactly here right. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Washington about to close this one out as they are down to a knee. Washington about to close this one out as they are down to a knee. Charles, remember they trailed an intermission. They come out, they have the big second half, and that 